Uh, so today I'm going to uh, deliver a talk, come demo on micro Kubernetes Kubernetes and deploying application. So a bit about me, I'm a Google Vanguard scholar and I just got my KCN certification just a month back. I'm a junior undergrad from India and those are my socials if you want to connect. So let's understand some prerequisites right now. So this is a talk and last uh, we will have some workshop kind of thing where we will just go through all the things which we have taught. So first you should be having a bit of knowledge about kubectl. Kubectl is a command line utility for your Kubernetes cluster. Some working knowledge on uh, any programming language, we will be using a bit of Python over here, but you can have anything, so it's okay. Uh, there is no need for high level knowledge because I will be explaining as we go. Third most important thing is to, you should be having permissions to install and modify application on your machine. So if you have a local computer that is locked, make sure you have unlocked or you can use a VM on cloud. Last but not the least, you should have Python, Docker installed on your machine. If you want to know how to do that, you can follow some tutorial online. If not, it's okay. So let's uh, discuss the agenda at first. Uh, first, we will be go and creating uh, application. So application can be a very simple application and then we will run the application locally and then following the cloud native way of development we will containerize the application then we will create a cluster for our uh, Kubernetes and then we will create the objects so that we can deploy our application to the cluster. Then we will templatize it using Helm so that we can have a repeatable deployment and lastly we will clean everything. So you might have a question, what application we are building? So application can be anything which has business logic in it. So right now we are using a simple Flask container serving gen static content or static HTML content, but it can extend to microservices. It can extend to macro anything which you can run, which has some business logic which delivers value to your customer. And we will dockerize it because dockerizing it will help us to uh, share the application. It will help us to have a containerized environment and also it will help us to move the application to another uh, environments like Kubernetes using orchestrators. So what is Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is a container orchestrator from CNCF. So it helps us, so like what is orchestration? Orchestration is managing your containers in a way that it's scalable and available. And uh, the problem with a lot of container orchestrators are like if the application is down, then you need to have some specific environments where you can pull that up again. But uh, see, Kubernetes is tested and available for availability and scalability and it's used by various companies like Google, Microsoft and a lot more names. A lot of cloud providers, mostly all of them, provide an environment for you to have a uh, managed Kubernetes cluster. So ease of maintenance is very easy. Like suppose you want to update your version or something like that. If you want to downgrade, you want to scale the number of nodes you have. It is very easy. It's just clicking some buttons or run, running some command line utility tools. Next about micro -kates. So as I told, there are a lot of ways you can install and run Kubernetes on your cloud provider. It's just button click of buttons. But how to do that on your local machine? So we have something called micro -kates. It's a bootstrapping engine that helps us to install Kubernetes onto your local machine. So the benefit of this is that you can install using a couple of lines. And second, one of the most important things is highly portable. You can install that on any machine. This is a Windows. You can install that on Linux. You can install that on Mac. Different architecture works. And most importantly, it is very lightweight. So it, uh, it's around 540 MB of RAM, which you need depending upon your size of application. And you can scale that according to your requirements. Next is micro -kates provides us with a very simple interface for managing Kubernetes cluster. Like you have a simple command line utility which you can use to create cluster, implement uh, plugins like Helm, dashboards. We will be seeing those all in the demo. And also it has a built-in registry for container images. Like you can have a container registry inside your cluster which you can use to push images, pull images from. You don't need to configure your Docker Hub anything just for local uses. So you are saving on bandwidth as well while you go. And what is Helm? So the problem with uh, Kubernetes manifest is like, suppose if you want to deploy a WordPress site, for example, you will have a lot of objects in it, like a lot of objects in the sense like you will have PVCs, you will have PVs, 
you will have service accounts, you will have RBAC, and all those things. So all of those have different objects and different manifests re related to the objects. So it becomes very hard when you have to combine all those objects in a linear way and deploy all of them. So Helm comes in the picture as a templating engine or as a package manager, like your APT package manager, which helps you to install applications in your cluster. Manual deployment isn't reproducible as in the sense like when you have a lot of object manifests, like 20, 30 manifests, it becomes very hard for you to manually deploy that again. For sure, you can keep that in a folder, but the problem is if there is some order which you need to follow, like suppose you need to have a namespace before you deploy your application to a specific namespace, it makes it hard because you don't have the namespace. So Helm comes into the picture as a way to have a manual deployment in an automated fashion, which will have an auto. And the last but not in, uh, most important thing is like, there is community templates. Like for example, if I am an expert in some specific application, and I know how to deploy that, like for example, a database with PVCs and PVs, then there are some community templates which you, I can use to deploy the application in a click of button. It reduces the barrier because I don't have to learn a lot of uh, things about Kubernetes and all those things. I can just use simple commands, like when you want to deploy a simple um, application in your Ubuntu machine, then you use APT. It is very easy because you don't need to configure permissions and everything. As simple as that, you can also use community templates, and then you can use the community templates and contribute to them. You can also create your templates for your internal company or maybe your group and push that to your image registry. Uh, all those things are possible. So let's do the hands-on. Okay. So right now I'm running a simple Ubuntu VM on cloud. This is Azure portal, and we are running a four CPU, 16 gigabits of um, machine. It's in the Korean Central region, and I have connected this using SSH. So right now, let's reconnect to it. As we see, it's setting up the SSH host. And right now, we are connected to the um, cloud machine with all the permissions and there, and also to explore the thing. I have a GitHub repository, which I've cloned over here, which has all the instructions. You will find that on my slide, but uh, yeah. So let's start. So at first, you need to make sure that you have micro creators installed. So to install that, you can use the official site, and this is as simple as having enough permissions and then uh, running this command. And then let's see what application we have. So right now, if we go to the reply folder, we see, okay, the screen size is okay. So we see we have a simple, Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So right now we see we have a simple HTML uh, uh, template, which is we are using Flask as a server. Flask as a HTML, uh, so Python thing. Oh, uh, yeah. So we are using that to render template of a complete .html, which is a template over here. It's a simple HTML page. As we need a server to run this thing in a container, we are using a, a class. And then we are exposing the port 5000 where we are running the application. For the HTML thing, it's a very simple application which says hey. And uh, for, if you see, there are some static images over here and the CSS, which is over here. So if we want to run this application, uh, we can create a VN virtual environment. We can go inside the virtual environment. Uh, a virtual environment is good because you don't want to mess your dependencies across the uh, global scope. So, and then we can install our dependencies. 
So the requirements are TXT file contains all the dependencies we need to run this application. So install all those things. And all of those are installed. So now let's run the application and see what's in there. So it's running in port 5000. So we need to export the port and we can see the application. So it's a simple Hey application with a rocket with CSS on it. Now, first part is completed. Like your application is running. It's, it can be your local machine now. If you want to share this application with your friends or someone, you need to dockerize it. You can send the whole logic also, like your GitHub repo, but the problem with that is like, if they want to run this, they need to understand the flow, like what is happening, what they need to install, what environments they need to create. So there comes a Docker file. So a Docker file is an instruction for your machine to understand, the Docker demon to understand what application you want to containerize. So we are using, as we understand, this is a simple Python application. So we are using a Python base image. And then we are copying the contents from deploy. So if you see the directory, so the, this is the deploy directory. And we are co copying the contents from deploy to deploy and making work directly as deploy. So all the functionality will happen over there. Then if you remember, we installed um, requirements.txt in the uh, demo. So we are installing all the requirements.txt. And in the demo, we use pip3. Right now, we are not using pip3 because we are using the Python 3.8 base image. And there is no dependency conflict. And then as our uh, application is running in port 5000, we are exposing that port and running it across all hosts so that it's accessible by everyone in the machine. So now our main task is to build the image. So to build the image, it's as simple as copying this command and pasting in the same directory of our Docker file. So if we paste over here, it is starting to build the image. So to understand the command, docker build means building the uh, image from the file. This image can be shared across everyone. And then we are giving a name to them. Minus T means tagging the image. This is the image name. And this is the tag. And a dot means the same directory. So if you see, we have the docker file in the same directory. Suppose if it was some another directory, then you could have the directory over here. But as it's in the same directory, we don't need that. And if you see what is happening, right now we have cloned the Python 3.8 base image, and then we are deploying the application uh, in, uh, inside the container, and then installing all the dependencies. So if I would have say, uh, sent you this application, then you wouldn't have understood like what to do if you haven't got any docs. But if you, you right now use docker run this image, then it is as simple as using that command to run your application. Okay, so I think there's some issue with SSH. Yeah, we have this back. So now if you use Docker image LS, we can see we have a new application over here, which has been created a minute ago. Now this is just the image, it's not running. So to run this, you can use the docker run command. And minus D means it's running in dash mode. It won't show any logs. And minus B means we are port forwarding, like we are forwarding the images 5000 port to our local host 5000 port. New is the image name which we have built. So this is the image name. If you change the image name over here, you need to change this as well. So let's run the image. Okay. Okay, so the port is already being used. So one thing we can do is like, we can change the port to something else. Like we suppose if you use 5001, okay, that is also being used. 5011, yeah. So 5011 is the port which is not being used. So let's do this. And we will see the application running inside the container right now. 
So this one is what is running inside Docker. This one was running as a normal application, I think which we will, will not be running as we have closed that, and this is a Docker image. Now, if you pull this and run this Docker image, then it will run the application without any follow-up instructions. So we are done with the containerization part. Now we want to have a orchestrate to orchestrate the application. So for that, we can use any, uh, uh, what do we say, uh, um, uh, bootstrapper. Right now we will use micro -creators. So if you don't have micro installed, then you can use that installation from the micro creators get started. And to run micro creators, you can just start micro creators start. So my, as, uh, yeah. as my micro creators cluster is already running, it won't show anything over here. So we can go and see the status. And we see highly available node, it's running. And so how can we see the nodes we have? So you can use micro creators, kubectl, get nodes. Sorry, nodes. We see we have a, a single node cluster running from four hours, 51 minutes. It's using the version 1.25.4. And now we will um, see how we can deploy the application inside our Kubernetes cluster. But first, we need to understand uh, the one of the good advantage micro creators has. So if you see micro creators status, you can see those are the enabled uh, extensions and those are disabled. So you can always enable an extension. And so if you are aware there is a dashboarding solution from the official Kubernetes, so we will enable that. So to enable that, Right now we are installing a dashboard, Kubernetes dashboard, and it's a very simple one-click installation using one command, and you can install it anything as you like using the same enable button. And yeah, it's installing right now. Yeah, it's installed, and now uh, let's see where is it installed. So we see our Kubernetes dashboard is up 32 seconds ago. And right now, we will expose the dashboard and use it. So to use it, we will expose at first. Okay, so we need to wait till the pod is running. So a couple of seconds more, yeah. Right now if we go again, we see this thing will be running. So anyways, uh, let's move forward. Right now I think there's some issue with this. And then we need to have an image registry where we can push our images. So to push that, uh, we can have micro creators, enable registry. And right now we are creating a Docker hub kind of registry inside our cluster. So let's see it.
So there is a new container registry over here where we can push our image. And so as you remember, we created a image uh, right now, a couple of seconds ago, uh, called new slash new. So we will push that image uh, to here. And see. So we have a uh, latest image which has been created seven minutes ago and it's uh, right now tagged. And now we will push this thing to the container registry inside our Kubernetes cluster. So it's being pushed and now, right now we can access our image from inside the Kubernetes cluster. So before that, it might be uh, very irritating to use micro creators, kubectl all the time. So you can always set an alias like this, where you, uh, with kubectl being uh, the default one, when you use, and you can see the nodes, the ports, everything over here. So right now we don't have ports, and that's the work moving forward. We will deploy a image inside of a cluster. So to deploy the image, you can use kubectl run, the name of the image and the name of the pod. So this is the image which we are going to use. So let's use kubectl run. And we can see there is a new image here, which is running. And if we describe the image, we will see It's running on the node Rithik because it's a single node cluster. And let's describe the pod to understand what is happening inside it. So as we see, we are using this localhost 32001 uh, image. So localhost is our image registry address, and this is our image, and it's running right now. So uh, this is uh, one of the ways you can deploy your application. The second one is using a manifest. So suppose if you have a Kubernetes manifest, you can use uh, to uh, deploy the application. It's a declarative way. So uh, let's understand what is a manifest at first. So manifests are a way for you to tell your API server what to deploy. So there are different type of objects. Some are um, um, deployments, some are pods, some are services, and uh, they can be CRDs also, which you can create. So we are using a deployment object. So deployment objects mean a way your pods won't be deleted and it will sustain. Like suppose your pod crashes right now. The previous way we use a pod, so it will crash and you won't get a new pod when it goes down, which you don't want in an environment because suppose you have a business logic and if it goes down, it will be hard for your company. So you can use a deployment object which will make sure that your pod is running. Replica means number of pods you want to run. It can be one, two, three, four, depending upon how much traffic you are expecting. And then we have the name of the container. This is the image registry. By default, it uses Docker Hub, but right now if we are specifying the image registry, we know it won't be using this one. It will be using this one, and this is the image name, and this is the image tag. So how to deploy this manifest? It is as easy as using kubectl apply. So you are applying the manifest to your cluster and name of the manifest, which is manifest.yaml. When you use this, you see two uh, stuffs are deployed. One is the deployment, which is here, and the second one is service. So service helps you to expose your application to the world. So we won't be going into the service part as of now. We will just understand the deployment. So let's see. So we see there is a deployment over here right now, and one cluster is, uh, one no, a pod is running. And if we see the pods, there is two one. This one was made by us, and this one is just the one we made. And suppose we, if we delete this pod, so using kubectl delete pods, we will see a new pod coming up because there is a deployment which makes sure we have the number of replicas always there. 
So let's see in a new terminal, I guess. So as we see, one is being terminated and a new pod came up just to make sure our deployment has one number of replicas always. So uh, this type of deployment is very helpful. We, and we have a very specific work case with not a lot of object or YAMLs. But suppose if we have a lot of YAMLs, then there comes a necessity of having a templating engine like Helm. So how to use Helm? So to understand what is Helm, let's go to the website again. So as you see, Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. Like we deployed this application using manifest, Helm comes in a picture by deploying manifest as a package manager. So to use Helm, you can use Helm button to see the versions you have. And then Helm supports a lot of uh, registries. So suppose if you want to add the most popular one, that is Bitnami. So you can use Helm repo add to your uh, registry. The micro KHS command we are using because we are dealing with uh, Helm inside micro KHS. So we will add Bitnami and then we can search images. You don't need to go to the internet and search. Like suppose if you want to search uh, Nginx image. We can see there are a lot of Nginx charts which you can install inside your cluster. This can, uh, this is a public uh, uh, repo, but you can also have a private repo just for your organization, which you can use to install versions of charts and all those things. So next, uh, we will install our image, which we have built. So we have a Helm folder in the thing where we have a template. So let's see what's there in the template and understand the structure of Helm. So let's open it. So uh, Helm has three more components versus charts where uh, some information regarding charts are there. One is charts.yaml, the description about your chart is there so that it can be shared. This one is a bit empty, but you can add more information over here like author and everything. Uh, then is uh, your templates. Templates are the files where your, uh, you have templatized everything. And for example, suppose we want to use this localhost 3200 Ubicon image. Then this is image, a child and the image. So if you go and see here in the images, so yeah, this is the container image. So as we had a manifest over YAML here, so uh, here in containers, we were using this image. Right now, also we are doing the same. In containers, we are using the image, but right now the value is not derived from hard coding it. It's derived from values.yaml. So in the image, it's using repository, this one. So when we render this thing, so values.image.repository comes over here, and value.image.tag comes from the tag. Now if we install this thing, it will be installing the following image inside your cluster. And the best part about Helm is like, if you change something over here, it will be reflecting across all the files. You don't need to find all the changes and control F, control R. You can just use one file to change all the permissions and all the images. So let's uh, do it once. So, so to install the following, you can use micro KTS, helm install. So we are using helm inside micro KTS. Helm is a command, install is the, what we want to do. The name of the deployment. So helm uses uh, something called uh, deployments over here. So suppose if you want uh, to give a name, which you can roll back previously or move forward with it, you can, can give a name so you can have Ubicon deployment. And then the location of the chart. So as we see, uh, it's a bit outside over here. 
So uh, it won't work over here. It will share that you have to give a generate name. So let's go into the root directory. And add this. So yeah. Now as we see, we have a WooCon deployment done and it's a revision one. So if you change your application moving forward, the revisions also change, so you have a history. And to see, uh, to expose your application, you can just follow this commands. We won't be going over there. We will be seeing uh, the status of the deployment inside Helm. So the release name will be Ubicon deployment. So as we see, we have a revision one deployed over here right now, and the installation is complete. So if we see inside the cluster, we can use micro, uh, micro kts, kubectl, get uh, deployments. And we see we have a Ubicon deployment template right now running, which is Helm. And suppose you want to clear this one, so you can always use micro creators. Helm install Ubicon deployment to remove the chart from your cluster. So it's, it's uh, removed and if you see right now, this installation is right now not more. To delete a deployment, Right now we are in the cleanup phase where we will remove everything by, uh, and it will help us to understand what we have created and how it can be removed. To install, uninstall something from Helm, we can use install the Helm release name. To uninstall a deployment or remove a deployment, we can use kubectl only. So you can use microsoft kubectl um, uh, delete deployment and the name of the deployment, which is Ubuntu deploy, Ubicon deploy. And we have deleted that. So right now our cluster will be a bit empty. So if we see kubectl get uh, pods, there is uh, this one terminating, and this one was the pod which we had ran at first using our simple imperative command. So to delete this is as easy as using uh, delete pods and as this pod is without a deployment, it won't be restarting. So if we delete the pod, it will be deleted without a restart. Let's wait for it. And yeah, so I think it's stuck. So yeah, it's uh, terminating, it's stuck kind of. In a, uh, so it's, yeah, it's deleted right now. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm done for now. Yes, please. It's coming. Ah, I hope it's not going to yeah. Oh, okay. Going. So, <laughs> sorry. Micro K Palace will snap version as a saying it's me, the man snappy, and then it's run it's me. So, we use the micro K eight as in uh, as a snap version, but it was very uh, unstable. Unstable. Yeah, so. Oh, oh can you repeat? Yeah. Yeah, we used micro K K a Kubernetes in in Ubuntu Snap version as a Snap version. Yeah, it, yeah, but it was very unstable. So, do you know anything about it, or can we make it stable? Or you, how how do you install micro? Uh, yeah. So, um, oh. oh yeah. Oh, like I use Snap, but are you using asking for production purposes or just for general playing around? Yeah, 
Yeah, is, is this only Snap version's problem or Raco K Kubernetes? I can get back with, uh, to you with more information about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, because uh, mm -hmm. I think that is from uh, isolated environment. So when I using APT version, is it is it always okay? But when I using Snap version, it's always something going wrong. So I should always. Which matter was it? Which matter? Uh, suspect, uh, 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 suspect on the snap uh, set itself. So is it stable now or not yet? Uh, for me, it's quite stable right now. When did you try last? Like, uh, are you uh, using the stable version or some release? Yeah, yeah, yes, no. Not only network, it's a, it's a process environment include. Uh, hmm. uh, for example, when I, when I uh, uh, handle on the file system, it's always going, uh, going something wrong. In the mixing environment, yes. Yeah, we can talk a little about this. Okay. Sure. And second, sorry. <laughs> no issues. Okay. I think Kubernetes is uh, normally running on dedicated server. It means uh, it has a static IP and using outside environment, for example, network, right? But uh, my Kubernetes is running on my laptop. Yeah. It's usually portable and get dynamic IP, right? Yeah. I think uh, it also uh, makes some uh, problem. So, uh, what's your um, how was your experience about how was your experience about this situation, like I, static IP and dynamic IP problem? Yeah. Actually, it depends uh, on your use case. For me, when I use locally, I prefer to use micro cables because I'm just using for some test purposes because you don't want uh, things to run on your local machine when you are serving customers, right? You can use some cloud providers or something like that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, or, um, yeah, sure. Thank you everyone for having me.